to our Pentecost worship, we want to give special thanks to our guest musicians today, Deanne and Kenneth Berry and Kendra Massey, and also Bob Wollston, who is our assisting minister as well. We appreciate their participation to make this extra special for you. Now let us prepare our hearts for worship with a moment of silence. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed, Alleluia. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are raised with him to new life. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning you created us in your image and planted us in a well-watered garden. In the desert you promised pools of water for the parched and you gave us water from the rock. When we did not know the way, you sent the Good Shepherd to lead us to still waters. At the cross, you watered us from Jesus' wounded side. And on this day, you shower us again with the water of life. We praise you for your salvation through water, for the water in this font, and for all water everywhere. Bathe us in your forgiveness, grace, and love. Satisfy the thirsty and give us the life only you can give. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
and for our salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. A reading from Acts, second chapter. When the day of Pentecost had come, the apostles were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues, as of flame, as of fire, appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who speak Galileans? And how is it that we hear, each of us, in our own native languages? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own language, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, men of Judea 
and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall, sh shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams, even upon my slaves, both men and women. In those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, fire, blood, and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. Let me speak to God. Today's psalm is Psalm 104. Let us sing to, say it together. How manifold are your works, O Lord! In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is the sea, great and wide, with the swarms too many to number. Great things, both small and great. There are the ships to and fro, and the Leviathan which you made for the sport of it. All of them look to you to give them their food in due season. You give it to them, they gather it. You open your hand and they are filled with good things. When you hide your face, they are terrified. When you take away their breath, they die and return to their dust. You send forth your spirit and they are created. And so you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. O oh God, rejoice in all your works. You look at the earth and it trembles. You touch the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will praise my God while I have my being. May these words of mine please God. I will rejoice in the Lord. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Hallelujah. A reading from 1 Corinthians. No one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit. In another, faith by the Spirit. In another, gifts of healing by the one Spirit. In another, the working of miracles. In another, prophecy. In another, the discernment of spirits. To another, various kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. All of these are activated by this one and the same Spirit, who allots to each one individually just as the Spirit chooses. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit, we are all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we all were all made to drink of one spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. according to John. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house were 
the disciples that met were locked for fear of the Jews. Jesus stood, came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After this, after he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. Back before all of this pandemic stuff changed everything, Rita, Pastor Wendy, and I went to a conference held by our Panhandle Conference. It was titled Discovering Hope and was for small churches and gave helpful ways for them to bring more vitality to their mission. As, par as a part of the day, they had a balloon exercise each of us was given a balloon and asked to blow it up. The leader talked about the Holy Spirit giving life and vitality to congregations. The leader also talked about how church leaders often want to control and direct the ministries and how people will engage with the church and therefore how the church will grow. I have a balloon right here to demonstrate what happened next. The leader asked us to predict where the balloons would go once we released them, like how we like to control the growth of the church. And this is what happened. We all laughed as the balloons did what mine just did. No one in that conference knew where the balloons would go or could control their paths. Of course, this is a metaphor of the working of the Holy Spirit. She blows and goes wherever she pleases. This is like what was told in our first lesson this morning. We heard in the Acts of the Apostles about that very first Pentecost of the church. We heard about the Holy Spirit coming as a strong wind and that was fitting since the same word can mean spirit, wind, breath. The Holy Spirit blew into the room where the disciples were all together. Tongues like that of fire landed on each of them. The people of faith that had gathered in the city heard this great commotion, this rushing wind, and the disciples speaking all of these various languages. They all came to see what was going on. They each heard, in their own language, the proclamation of the good news. It is this image of Pentecost that holds our imaginations when it comes to, celebration, to the celebration of this day. Over the years, over 70 years of them for a beautiful Savior, Pentecost has been about the Holy Spirit being let loose in the church, our community, and throughout the world. First, it has been about telling others about the good news, the task of evangelism. The Spirit calling us to invite others to experience the same joy and peace that transforms our lives into lives of faith. Second, it has been about being empowered by the Spirit to enter into ministries, to meet the needs of the community and world with faith active in love. But this year feels quite different since the usual ministry has been turned on its head. So much has changed in such a few short months. We, work, we are worshiping virtually and cannot come together physically quite yet. The usual ministries have all been suspended. We can wonder where the spirit is that directs a church that is no longer doing the usual ministry. Or maybe this year feels like right before that balloon was released in the story at the beginning of the sermon and the demonstration that I just did. You remember, the Holy Spirit is just about to be let loose. 
and she go, will go wherever and however she wants. She will become active again and start to grow whatever ministries are needed down the road. God's people are, in a way, yearning to be along for the delightful ride of faith. But maybe that isn't quite right either. Maybe the Holy Spirit is loose, just in a different way that it might be hard to see. Let's look at what we've learned and done in so short of a time. Our church and so many others too have learned how to take worship online. We had no idea how to do that just a few months ago. We can be assured that the Holy Spirit has been involved in guiding us in getting worship online. Worldwide climate change has been a concern for quite some time. Debates and arguments about how to proceed have been going on for many years. Since the worldwide sheltering in place started just a few months ago, there has been a 17% drop in greenhouse gases across the world. There are parts of the world where residents have breathable air for the first time in decades. People are seeing mountains and valleys that were never seen even on the best of air days. The Holy Spirit is surely at work and rejoicing in this. Perhaps humanity will see a sustainable way forward and take action after this experience. Across our city and throughout the nation, the world and the world, people are celebrating graduations and birthdays in awe-inspiring ways with drive-by or virtual celebrations of people they love, the spirit at work. All across this country, workers and industries that have been so easy to forget or discard are being seen as essential, and these people are seen as heroes. These people are being valued and cherished, and the spirit rejoices. Neighborhoods are loving their children through holding games up and down their streets. We are sending texts, emails, and letters to show our care. People are dropping off groceries and gifts to those in need. The list could go on, but we get the point. In all of this and more, the spirit is active. And as we come out of these pandemic times, the Spirit will nudge us into even deeper questions. She might ask us, what will we take forward from this time? What new way of seeing will we find as essential to a well-lived life of faith? She might also ask, what new ways of living and ministry will we try on? What new ways of being the church and people of faith do we want to hold on to because we have found them meaningful the holy spirit will ask how long will we or how will we listen to her going forward what sounds have we discovered are the spirit talking to us and the spirit will ask how will following god look for us in the months and years ahead what changes will we make to be ever more faithful in our lives and in the work we do in the community and the world? I am wondering and anticipating what answers we will discover. I hope you are too. We, this wondering does not make the challenges and sufferings during this time magically go away. This is a hard time to get through, even on the good days. But on this day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit is blowing into our lives and showing us the way forward. May the wind blow and the fire light us up. Come, Holy Spirit, and do your work in and through us. Amen. Thank you. 
with the whole church, let us confess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, for the world, and for all who are in need. We call on your spirit of unity, giving thanks for our different vocations. Activate and utilize the diverse gifts present in your church, that they reveal your love for all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We call on your spirit of life, present in air, wind, humidity, storms, and oxygen in our atmosphere, breathing energy into all things. Heal with your breath the whole creation, especially those who struggle to breathe due to air pollution. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We call on your spirit of righteousness. Wherever we as a people are divided, unite us. Wherever we are prideful, humble us. Give each one of us a heart for justice and empathy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We call on your spirit of healing. Bless nurses, doctors, midwives, chaplains, counselors, and hospice workers as they care for those in need. We pray for all who long for comfort, especially Hattie, Sandy, Bruce, Connie, Janet, Joe, Rich, Roland, Jim, Eldon, Bruce L., Sonia, Colleen, Carol, Gabrielle, Genevieve, and Gary. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We call on your spirit of friendship. As Elizabeth welcomed Mary to her home, give us a spirit of welcome to those whom we meet in this congregation and outside these doors. Surprise us daily with unexpected grace that we rejoice in every blessing you send. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We call on your spirit of wholeness. We pray for our community, our nation, and the world as we continue to face this pandemic. Protect the most vulnerable among us, especially all who are currently sick or in isolation. Grant wisdom, patience, and clarity to medical personnel workers at the meatpacking industry, all other essential workers, and the non-essential workers whose businesses have reopened. Give us courage to face these days, not with fear, but with compassion, concern, and acts of service. Trusting that you abide with us always. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, hear us now as we pray either silently or aloud for others on our hearts and minds. Lord, this weekend we especially grieve the senseless death of George Floyd, and we know that he is just the latest in a 
long number of black men who have been unjustly killed. We pray for justice. We pray for peace. We pray for your healing to surround the communities that are continue to be affected by this violence. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. We call on your spirit of hope as you have led your saints in all times and places, stir in us the desire to follow their example, leading us from death to new life in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. With bold confidence in love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. And as always, we encourage you to share that peace virtually uh, by texting someone or calling someone or finding other ways to keep in contact with those that are close to you. At this time in the service, we would normally receive our offering. We do give thanks to you for your continued faithfulness and ask you to please keep it up. Um, your offerings may be mailed or dropped off at the church office, or you may give online. And we thank you, as always, for your generosity. Jesus from the dead bring you to new life, fill you with hope 
and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen.